I do have to quickly ask you about your kids. Reese recently said that she does not think that her and Ava look alike, but everyone constantly calls them twins. Yeah. I'm curious where you stand on this. <laughs> well, uh, what I get a lot lately is they think Deacon looks like her and Ava looks like me. And my my response is always, duh. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. like, what, you know, how are you surprised that, that children look like their parents? Isn't that biologically how it's meant to work? <laughs> Right, absolutely. They are really following in your guys' footsteps right now. I mean, Deacon was so great in Never Have I Ever. No. What kind of advice are you giving to them as they sort of navigate this world? Well, you know, I know that he had a lot of fun doing that and acting is something he still may do at times, but he's really largely focused on, on his musical career, being a musician. Right now, he's just started freshman year of college. Um, you know, so we'll see. These kids, they're lucky enough to have any opportunity they want, um, which is not something that myself or Reese could have said at that age. And we just want them to be happy. That's what you want for your kids. You know, whatever they choose to do is to find a way to be happy doing it. And, you know, we'll see. Life takes a lot of different crazy twists and turns. I can't really predict what either of them will be five years from now, nor do I want to. I just want them to be happy. You're never gonna find him. You sure about that? I watched this movie last night. It was so much fun. Like, what a roller coaster. Um, Matthew, I know that you were super fascinated by this guy and this story. Ryan, how much did you know about this story before signing on? Very little. Uh, Matthew and I share a fascination or have shared a fascination with the 10, top 10 most wanted list, but somehow Jason Derrick Brown escaped my awareness. Um, you know, you think of the top 10 list being Osama bin Laden with Whitey Bulger. And as, as Matthew says, there's then there's this like blonde hair, blue eyed surfer guy on, it, you know, so that's compelling as it is. Wasn't that familiar with the story, but once I read the script, I knew I wanted to be a part of it. I'm gonna rob an armored truck and I want you to help me. It felt like a very even, uh, balanced portrayal of a story that was wild. And I loved how how clear I saw my character. His his drives, his directive was so obvious, you know. I said to Matthew, I, to me, he's like a shark. You know, it's a focus, undeterred, will stop at nothing in pursuit of this person. And although he doesn't catch him, and Jason Brown is still at large, I knew who Lance was based on things that we could read, footage that was out there, and how Matthew wanted my character to function in this film. Hello, hello. Dudley, good answer. Were you able to talk to any of his family members? I mean, his sister, the mom at all, or, or Matthew for you as well? Yeah, that's, you know, that's I, yeah no, we, I made a specific decision to not. Um, I did do a lot of interviews and research on the movie. You know, there was a lot out there in the public domain about Jason Derrick Brown. I did meet some people who knew him. I didn't want the family to influence my take, um, you know, and, and make me, you know, see Jason in a different lens. I wanted to be as objective as possible and allow myself to come up with the take that I that I had in the movie. Um, so that was a decision I, I had made. How do you think his family is going to feel? Are they aware of this movie? I think they are aware of the movie. Um, you know, I can't speak to that. At the end of the day, you know, not because I'm not them, right? But at the end of the day, you know, this film is about the dark side of the American dream, a charismatic con man who, you know, ultimately did a very horrendous act. And the movie's goal is to really look at him for who he was, you know, because it's not a movie just about Jason Derrick Brown, even though it is all about Jason Derrick Brown. It's also right. about, you know, Ryan's character, Lance Lysing, who's hunting him down. One of the central questions the film asks is, why do we fall for con artists? Why does this keep happening? And I think it's an important story to be told, but obviously, you know, it would never be a filmmaker's intention to exacerbate pain or trauma for any person who's represented yeah. it. And, you know, we just, we're hoping to tell the story as honestly and authentically as possible. This is our prime suspect, Jason Derrick Brown. Ryan, it's so funny because you and Tom never actually share any scenes in person together. Were you guys able to form any kind of bromance or friendship on set? Well, no, actually, no. Matthew intentionally kept us apart. He wanted us to never meet. <laughs> I have a, I, I have a little frustration because Tom's such a good actor that like Lance Lysing, I never got to catch him and have a scene with him. Um, 
But uh, I, I think his performance is phenomenal. And that's why you're left with these conflicted feelings. You know, he's so charismatic and portrays him in such a lively manner that, uh, you know, it's you're not you're, you don't have just one perspective about him or the story or maybe you find yourself rooting for him in certain regards but lance never does lance wants this guy but uh yeah i would love to work with tom someday yeah have you given him any advice on being a dad now that he's expecting well that news just came out yesterday to my knowledge and um i haven't seen him since but uh maybe we'll have a conversation at some point over the course of this press run 